I am uh, a psychiatrist who's had the privilege of working in primary care, uh, actually in far on the East Coast, Twillingate and Goose Bay, Labrador originally, and came back to Thunder Bay and uh, had an association actually dating back to Kevin Nugent days uh, in the mid 80s. I was actually the first student working with him as a medical student. So uh, um, I certainly, dating back to then, have found the mental health area both a challenge uh, as well as an exciting area. And what better place to learn that than in the Northwestern Ontario? Um, with that in mind, I wanted to share our uh, experiences, and I say our because I work with uh, a number of uh, wonderful colleagues that have allowed uh, a success both in the primary care side and the mental health sector, uh, researchers, administrators, um, senior colleagues, all of which uh, none of our successes would have been uh, possible. The mental health system, when it works, looks like this. When it doesn't work, it starts looking like this and this and this and that. The bottom line being there's a gridlock in the system, uh, being able to access between providers, being able to have primary care physicians be able to make a call to a colleague and say, can you get someone admitted? Uh, when the hospital calls, as I've done in the last week working at the regional hospital to get someone back to their family physician, you can guess what the answers are, and uh, unfortunately more often than not. The problems we found in mental health care is uh, we are often, uh, our challenge is to be relevant. If I'm going to write a note, let's make a note that's relevant to them. If I'm going to communicate, I should probably write a note. And for, I'd say, many years, we still wonder where, where the clinical work goes at the LPH, meaning sometimes it's hard for people outside of the facility to know because notes were often very difficult or not forthcoming, being able to get information promptly. Some people perceive, including patients, that actually treating individuals in, in, a, in a psychiatric setting has a stigma attached to it, and we certainly found that in evaluation, so opportunities in which to provide services in less stigmatized settings is uh, a value. And one of the areas we wanted to address as we developed this model and modeled it after others uh, in other locations. We certainly felt if we were going to deliver care in a primary care setting, just like their responsibilities, we wanted to be prompt and timely. We also felt if we're going to come in with this, uh, the so-called specialist uh, uh, skills, we wanted to make sure we, we built information for the family physicians, and as you'll see, we certainly felt we've accomplished that. Some other principles of, of our shared care model was to make sure we based it as much as possible, co-located it in the primary care setting. So I think this is a model that could apply to certainly beyond uh, uh, mental health service, and that is if you have specialty skills, try to be as close as those primary care providers. It's understandable that the term collaboration is necessary, being able to work as a partner with individuals, and I know many in the room are working uh, diligently on that. One of the unique features of offering specialty services like psychiatry uh, and other mental health needs is being able to be available for advice that wasn't formalized. The more informal we made our access, the more we were capable of addressing wait times, increasing access, and helping our primary care colleagues and being relevant. So a phone call or an email that hopefully I won't get um, in the middle of my presentation um, uh, is there to provide access. And it's not uncommon. I get a call from the 25 or so family physicians I work with just to ask about an updated medication, a use in pregnancy. Um, and so providing that backup support was a critical feature. The support for shared care mental health services uh, is, is growing, and it's been uh, very much influenced by recent funding grants, primary care transition fund grant that uh, I think was about $800 million of a number of years ago when the government had money. And, uh, um, and, and opportunities and other resources have now been placed, and I certainly think the, um, the CCMI, CCMHI website has a number of pooled resources if you're looking for support and I know um, other uh, resources that are listed there um, are readily available to, to give evidence to supporting the model. Why provide specialty services in the primary care site? Well, we certainly found that it's, uh, this was one avenue in which reform is possible, and I certainly like uh, being a part of change. Um, we certainly felt uh, if we were to succeed at shared care, and why you may want to consider co-locating or being closely affiliated with primary care would be um, uh, to consider evaluation. If there's a possibility of landing some, some form of program evaluation, it was critical to our success. We certainly feel, as I've mentioned, it's a model for other specialty services to consider. I'm not sure why we haven't gotten more, for instance, internal medicine being uh, similarly uh, affiliated and funded 
uh, and affiliated with the primary care setting. We were not going to proceed unless we had evidence-based models of care. We wanted to make sure if we're going to treat illnesses, these were illnesses that were common, illnesses that were treatable and responsive to the treatments offered. And we feel that we've been a part of the evidence to support the fact that you treat highly prevalent dis disorders like depression and anxiety. Uh, the evidence is growing, uh, certainly in my re recent review of literature, that, that this is probably one of the most cost-effective interventions one can provide in mental health services. Um, we are evolving our service. We continue to, to try to engage with our, uh, our change, and we've now been fortunate to engage with the uh, child's, um, um, Children's Centre here by affiliating with the, uh, um, a worker through the Children's Centre here in Thunder Bay. We engaged with the serious mentally ill, those with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, and wanted to make sure if we were to provide a service, it was to be responsive to that population as well. And most importantly, I think if you're going to start a service or be a part of this evolution, it's, it's understandable. You want to make it fun and enjoyable. Some aspects of our successes uh, have been across the, uh, the spectrum of program evaluation. We've been doing pre and post measurements since we started this service. It's allowed us to uh, prove what we do was working. It allowed us to uh, monitor what we were not succeeding at. We've published um, uh, five papers now associated with this work in peer-reviewed journals and have had the opportunity of presenting at times um, uh, uh, up to seven presentations at the National Conference of Shared Care. I think most exciting has been affiliated with the teaching opportunities, Lakehead University, um, British Columbia, um, the medical school, we now have about three or four uh, med school or Lake and University learners att attached to our program, and this certainly allows us to expand the projects and components of evaluation for us. We certainly think that the, the success we've had has allowed us also to provide opinions and insights at an at a advisory level and through leadership opportunities. Um, when we looked at, uh, this is the the, our five-year paper looking at five years of um, uh, just under 2,000 uh, individuals that were treated at the Fort William Clinic. And as you know, for those that are familiar with the clinic, it serves a large population in Thunder Bay. It's moved from fee-for-service to a family health team model. It has more than 10 family physicians. And um, our, as I mentioned, our priorities were access, uh, promptness, um, and increasing family physician skills. So when we go into a clinic, it's not just to service clinical, clinical need, it's to educate, uh, to have opportunities to increase their skills. So when I go back and talk to Dr. McLeod about how much Zoloft he was using in 1999, he was no longer asking me that question three months later. He was using the appropriate doses. He was increasing his skills, and the nature referrals were changing over time. If you're going to build a service program evaluation, there are a number of uh, templates or, or grids you can use. This is just one of them, but we used it as our model to find what's going to work, what, what would funders want to have, and certainly the uh, Canadian Institute for Health Information gave one uh, model that had eight items here, and we tried to attach our evaluation instruments to that. Our two core measures uh, tracked um, uh, symptom measures with DSM criteria that had high validity and reliability, and ours, our first measure was a personal, the patient health questionnaire, and the second was a WHO-based instrument uh, that evaluated function. I think if you're going to look at any measure, probably some degree of how well people were making friendships, buying their groceries, and doing day-to-day -day activities is probably a lot more critical than whether or not they have a diagnosis of depression even schizophrenia, because really at the end of the day, despite the diagnosis which one can obtain, function is probably at the end of the day more important than, certainly from my point of view, than, than just uh, symptom measures. 